In a time where communication, service and transactions between other countries are limited, it's important that New Zealand gains as much independence as possible in maintaining our ways of living. New Zealand's primary energy source comes from gas and electricity. We've already made great steps towards sustainable and renewable electricity, such as our hydro dams and wind turbines. But what about gas? At the moment, our primary source of gas is in Taranaki, where corporations such as Methanex tap into our natural gas reserve and use it over time. This, however, is not sustainable. In the past few decades, our natural gas reserves have significantly depleted, and it's been our main source of methanol for over 40 years. In the near future, this is going to run out. I think it's about time we move on from this method. Instead of taking gas from the ground, we should take it from our waste. And we can do this using biodigestion, a simple process that turns New Zealand's waste into our own biogas, and it has four incredible benefits. Creating green energy, producing rich fertilizer, diverting and recycling waste, and saving on waste disposal costs. Let's talk about green energy. Here, we have a basic biodigester, also known as an anaerobic digester. We need to feed it something, so we're going to give it organic matter. This can range from food scraps and plants all the way to animal waste and effluent. When the organic matter is placed in the digester, millions of tiny bacteria in the absence of oxygen will break down the waste and create something called biogas, a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide that's very similar to natural gas. Straight away, this can be used to help generate electricity, heat, and even help make the fuel in your car. And anything that isn't turned into biogas will instead turn into a sludge known as digestate. Once this is dried properly, it turns into a nutrient-rich fertilizer. If dried correctly, it can become bedding for livestock, or you can simply throw it in your compost. And the best part is that any digestate that isn't used goes right back to the beginning to be processed again. This is far more sustainable and cheaper than needing to export the waste to a separate treatment plant for further processing, thus saving on overall waste costs. Now, this is not a new invention. The idea has been around since the 17th century when a Belgian scientist realized that flammable gas could be made from decaying organic matter. And over time, this idea has evolved and been refined into an extraordinary invention that could once power your neighbor's barbecue and now your whole home. Biodigesters have been implemented across New Zealand over the past decade, and we've already seen some great results. Our Mangare wastewater treatment plant has had some great success so far, and the ASB are encouraging dairy and farm owners to invest in biodigesters so they can deal with their livestock's waste and become energy renewable at the same time. Our first biodigester was implemented in 1983, and as more people hopped on the trend, we've slowly generated more biogas as a nation, but it hasn't quite been fast enough. And there's a few reasons why. The efficiency of biodigesters depends heavily on availability of resources, availability of technology, and economic viability. The biodigesters will always run on our waste. This means if we use up all our organic matter, we'll either have a drop in energy or we'll have to find more. And this could result in deforestation, cropland degradation, and land alteration. The technology for the biodigesters must be up to date and checked thoroughly. If we do not have the right equipment, such as proper ventilation, we could run the risk of carbon dioxide pollution, as well as posing a health risk to citizens. And, of course, it would be considerably expensive to rebuild our gas centers and turn them into biodigesters. So, where's the magic machine that can do all three? Well, that's not quite the case. There are many different ways you can anaerobically digest something, and each method will have its own pros and cons. For example, a thermophilic industrial biodigester can produce large sums of energy for cities and towns and has up-to-date technology to handle it all. Because it can provide energy for so many people, companies are often given larger budgets to facilitate its construction, but because of the size, it's incredibly hard for them to find enough resources to maintain that level of energy output. A mesophilic domestic biodigester, on the other hand, is hooked up directly to your house. Because of its size, an average day's worth of food scraps should be enough to keep it running. There are many commercially available domestic biodigesters that you can buy straight off the web, and most are affordable for an average household. However, because of its small size and easy-to-use structure, it doesn't come with the same kind of safety and security an industrial biodigester has. So if you don't know what you're doing, it could blow up. So, what's a solution for New Zealand? Well, if we get a couple of huge industrial biodigesters to power all our main cities, we'd probably have to use the whole continent just to power them. And 
if we put a million or so home biodigesters in somewhere like Auckland and Wellington, you'd have a ticking time bomb if even one person didn't know how to use it correctly. So, how can we really implement this in New Zealand? I think we should move away from trying to find the perfect biodigester and focus more on how we can implement them. The technology we have is great, but the way we're using it is not. I think we should introduce a new economic model that utilizes centralized biodigestion in areas of high density population. In other words, it means using our industrial biodigesters in the right places. Let's backtrack. The problem with our industrial digesters was that there weren't enough resources guaranteed for, to power them, right? So where do we have guaranteed resource? In the domestic market. A major city like Auckland has over one and a half million people producing organic waste every single day, and almost all of this goes to landfill. Well, what if we took our industrial biodigesters and used them to consume all this organic waste? Now we can get the high energy benefits from industrial biodigesters that essentially have an unlimited amount of resource to supply and feed them, and we reduce our landfill at the same time. But how do we get the waste to the plant? The same way we collect our garbage. We already have a red bin and a blue bin for general waste and plastics, so how about a brown bin for organic waste? It's a very familiar concept. It would deal with waste separation and it would create multiple employment streams in the construction se sector, manufacture, pickup and maintenance in bin services, cleaning crews, waste transport and processing, management and administration. In fact, Berlin has implemented the brown bin system since 2013 and collects up to 60,000 tons of organic waste per year, produces biogas that is 98% methane and plans to have as many as 150 waste collection vehicles running their own biogas in the near future. The worldwide market is also waking up to the economic potential of biodigestion. The USA has recognized the potential for biodigestion growth with global revenue projected to be roughly double from 17.2 billion in 2011 to 33.1 billion in 2022, according to a Pike Research report. And the market is expected to continue to grow as interest in clean, renewable energy increases. Well, this all sounds great, but does it really apply to New Zealand? A cost-benefit analysis on organic recycling in Auckland was prepared for the Ministry of the Environment in 2017, 2007. They found that on average, people are willing to pay $1.50 to dispose of their organic waste per week. The NZ Census 2018 data in Auckland listed around 500,000 occupied private dwellings, indicating a budget of $38.8 million per annum. Keep in mind, this figure is the bare minimum as it excludes all food manufacturing or service businesses. As well as this, the Auckland City Council record as of August this year indicated our dwelling base has increased to around 570,000 new premises. This economic model proves that as a standalone business, Auckland in particular could be commercially viable for biodigestion. But when we take into account the jobs that are being created, removing people from welfare, accelerating our national carbon reduction goals, extending the life of our landfills, and other financial and social factors, this model could be used at a national level if altered correctly. So let's take a moment to recap what we've talked about today. Our problem was the way we dealt with gas. We tap into our natural gas reserves and use it over time, which is not sustainable or renewable. An alternative could be the use of biodigestion, a natural, self-sustaining method of producing gas that can help make green energy, produce fertilizer, divert and recycle waste, and save on waste disposal costs. Dairy farmers, treatment plants, and other New Zealand factories have experimented with biodigestion over the past decade and found some great success. But the transitional period and production of biogas as a country has not been happening fast enough. So what's slowing us down? It hasn't been the technology. It's the way we've been using it. And I think by introducing a new economic model that utilizes centralized industrial biodigestion in areas of high density population, we could see some serious results. Auckland in particular has a lot of economic potential. If we collected organic waste from 500,000 homes using a brown bin system inspired by Germany and fed it to two local industrial biodigesters, we could be creating green energy for, the, for a third of New Zealand's total population by using material that would otherwise be thrown in landfill. There is, however, a bigger picture to biodigestion. Creating green, renewable and sustainable energy sources is extremely important, 
but it's just another step in transitioning New Zealand from a linear form of consumption to a circular economy, a sustainable, renewable lifestyle that lets New Zealand cherish and utilize its resource while becoming independent in maintaining our beautiful ways of living. This, ladies and gentlemen, was my Eureka moment.